Okay, so today we're going to use this Greyhound Jack Russell Terrier Doberman Pinscher data to do a Tukey test. And so I'll get on the computer and walk you through the steps there. This is the first thing you'll do is you'll grab your data. And remember, you're going to want to get into data, data analysis, single factor ANOVA, and in your input range, I'm going to include labels. Got labels in the first row. When I do it, I get my output. And so my output has all those data, and now they're analyzed. And so this is just review. And so basically what this is telling us when we look down at our p-value, because it's less than 0.05, clearly there is at least one mean which differs from at least one other mean. But there might be more than one mean that differs from another mean. So which means differ and which means don't differ significantly? And to get at that, we're going to run a two keys test. And so I've already started that, and I'm going to switch to that page so you can see what doing a Tukey test in Excel looks like. And so let me switch over to where I'm running the Tukey test. Here's basically what you were just looking at. Right? And remember that there's some key things we need to deal with when we're running a Tukey test. One is we need to remember we got three groups. We need to remember that we have counts of nine in each group, that's n. We're ultimately going to need basically our degrees of freedom here. Let me highlight those. That mean square number. And the reason why this is important is when we run a Tukey test, we're going to have to get Q. And so Q is this thing you get off the table. I'm not going to show you the table right now. It's in the PowerPoint on this. But that table, if you'll remember, has basically a series of columns which are based on the number of groups. And so you're going to use the column for three groups because we have three different means that we're dealing with. And then you're going to scan down that column till you get to your um, degrees of freedom of 24 here. Um, and that's the degrees of freedom for the mean squared within groups. Um, so it's the second degrees of freedom is equal to the total number of observations, 27, minus the number of groups, which is 3. Um, but when you look up in that table, there's a row for 24, a column for 3, and you look at the intersection of those, and you get your Q, and that's right here. Q is 3.53. And then you're going to calculate your critical value. The critical value is basically how big the difference between the means has to be in terms of its absolute value for it to be a statistically significant difference. And the critical value is always going to be equal to Q times the square root of the mean squared for error, or sometimes within groups it's called, divided by N. And in our particular case here, it's equal to Q, 3.53 in our example, times the square root of this number right up here, that's the, the key MS, divided by 9, which is our sample size. So let me calculate that right here. So I'm going to say it's equal to 3.53, because that's Q, times the SQRT, the square root, of this value right here, divided by 9, so make sure, divided by 9, make sure you get your parentheses right here, and hit enter. And so our critical value for all our comparisons, there's only one critical value, it's the same for all comparisons, is 2.21, 
and I'll just say 9, 6. I can grab that and copy it down. We're going to compare each of our differences and see whether it's greater than this. So, for the difference, the first difference is Greyhound. Remember when we got these different group? We can compare Greyhounds to Jack Russell Terriers. We can compare Greyhounds to Doberman Pinschers. And we can compare Jack Russell Terriers to Doberman Pinschers. That's what these are. GH versus RT, JRT, Greyhound versus Jack Russell Terrier. And so to calculate that, I'm going to say, well, it's equal to the Greyhound average minus the Jack Russell Terrier average. And I get a calculated value of 4.11. And you might want to check that, right? And if you look at the difference between 40 and basically 35.89, that's 4.11. Similarly, here we're going to get the difference between greyhounds, and then we're going to subtract from that the Doberman Pinscher value, and that says the difference is 11. Eyeball these numbers, make sure you're doing your math right. Is the difference between 40 and 29 11? Yes, it's 11 miles per hour. Remember, we got units here. And then lastly, this difference is the difference between Jack Russell Terriers, there's the mean right here, minus this mean. And so now I've got my differences. I can compare them to my critical values. And this tells me whether or not they're significant. Any time the difference, and I should say the absolute value of the difference, sometimes you get negative numbers here, depending upon how you calculate your means. For example, if I had uh, subtracted the mean of uh, gray ounce from Jack Russell Terriers, I'd get negative 11 versus 11. It doesn't really matter. The difference is 11 miles per hour. And so don't get fooled by negative numbers. Just take the absolute value. And so, is this a statistically significant difference? According to the two key test, yes it is, because the difference of 4.11 is bigger than the critical value of 2.21. If that difference was less than 2.21, let's say it was 1.5 miles per hour, this would not be a statistically significant difference. And so, yes, this is also a statistically significant difference. And the third comparison, that between Jack Russell Terriers and Doberman Pinschers, is also statistically significant since 6.9 is greater than 2.2. And so what this Tukey test is telling you is basically that the mean running speed of each of the three breeds of dogs differ significantly from the other two mean running speeds of the dog breeds. And so all the means are statistically significantly different from one another. And so this is an example of a two-key